Hi, Mike Aben here with, well, a different kind of Let's Play, at least different for me. I've done a number of Let's Plays over the years with Kerbal Space Program, but I've never done one designed for the absolute beginner. That's what this one is going to be. Something for someone who has maybe heard about the game, or maybe this is the first time you've ever heard about the game, or you've maybe played the game, got a little bit frustrated, or maybe video games are something that you've had limited experience with. I know looking over the demographics of my videos that this game attracts people across the generations. Little kids play this game right up to old farts like me. And so I'm going to assume absolutely nothing. So in this video, we're only going to be talking about a few things. We'll talk about the different modes in which this game can be played. We'll talk a little bit about the Kerbals and what it is that you can be doing with them. But most of our time is going to be spent on one of the most important mechanics of the game, which is collecting science. Before we get to all that, let's talk a little bit about what the game is actually about. I think the title of the game pretty much gives it away what this is about. You are going to manage a space program and you're going, these space programs are going to be manned by Kerbals. This is an example of a Kerbal right here. They are your astronauts and with them you have an entire solar system full of planets and moons for which to explore. But that's getting a little bit ahead of myself. There are other games like that, but the thing that makes this game unique, and I think very different from other games that are like it, is that the physics that it uses for you to get around space are the actual real world physics um, that, is, that, that is out there that you really do need to think about as you're maneuvering crafts to go from one place to another in space. It, but it also presents that to you in a fun and engaging sort of way so that you actually are learning all of these ideas without really realizing you're learning all of these ideas. And in fact, people that play this game for a while, suddenly they find themselves watching real world space launches and knowing what they're talking about or watching a science fiction movie and going, oh, wait a second, that can't work that way. But anyway, let's get ourselves started. We're going to start ourselves a brand new game. So we're going to click start game. We're going to start a new game. And we have three modes in which we can get started. Let's talk a bit about the three modes really quickly. The sort of default mode, the mode that it gives you right off the bat is called career mode. Uh, let's read the little description here. In career mode, you have to manage all aspects of your space program. Funds, reputation, and science are all active, and contracts are available at mission control. So what that is saying is you have three resources you have to manage. Funds, your money, reputation, and science. And uh, these three resources are all there for different things. Um, and you pick up contracts, and those contracts give you objectives, and as you fulfill those objectives, you earn funds, reputation, and science, which allow you to advance through the game. That's the default mode. We also have sandbox mode. In sandbox mode, everything is unlocked. Everything in the game is available for you right off the bat. A lot of people like to jump into sandbox mode right away. It's a little bit unusual, actually, I think, for Kerbal, a game like Kerbal Space Program when they have this unlocked. Many games will unlock this later down the road for you because a lot of people, if they're just starting out, will find Sandbox quite overwhelming. You see all the parts that are available, and there are a lot. And you might look at it going, I don't know what I need to do. So, we're not going to start in Sandbox mode. We're going to start in what's the easiest mode. We're going to start in Science mode. Science mode is a bit like Career mode, except you don't have to worry about contracts. The only resource you have to manage is Science. And that makes it a somewhat easier game. So we're going to pick science mode. We're going to pick ourselves a flag. Um, you can actually put in your own. I'm going to pick this flag, this hexagon flag, because what it does is it reminds me of some future evil corporation that is now running the world. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. You can also play with the difficulty settings. I'm going to leave it on normal. You know what? We're not going to go through this. We're just going to keep it all simple. Leave it the way it is. If you want to go and play in there, that's fine. We're just going to hit the start button. And we get a little message here from Gene. Gene, why don't we read Gene's message? Nice to meet you. I am Gene Kerman, flight director, and your guide for this quick introduction. This is the Space Center. From here, you can manage all aspects of the space program. Feel free to have a look around. Hold the right mouse button. Obviously, these will be different under a uh, controller scheme. 
to move the camera and or use the arrow keys. Right click all over the Space Center facilities to view more about them. Left click when you're ready to go inside. If you need more information, check out the training section on the main menu. So let's say thanks, we got it up here. There is, what? It is not up there, it is down here. <laughs> this is how little I've looked at it. We do have the KSpedia. Uh, with lots of information in there. I'm not going to go through it. If you want to go through it, there's lots to learn, but you could watch tutorials like this one too. Why don't we look at that? Okay, not all of these buildings are active. So for instance, if I go over here to Mission Control, I can't, nothing happens there. This facility is closed because it, in science mode, it doesn't matter. Also, all of these buildings are fully upgraded and fully functional. In career mode, these buildings start at a lower tier and they don't have all of the functionality, which makes the game more challenging. That's why we're starting with science mode. Uh, what we'll look at first here is Research and Development Center. That is this guy right here. We'll click on that. This is our tech tree. Our goal is to make our way along the tech tree. As we earn science points up here at the top, it tells you how many science points we have right now. Clearly we're starting, it is zero. Um, as we earn science points, we can unlock nodes. So for instance, this one here called basic rocketry costs five science to unlock. And with that five science, we will unlock these parts. We only are gonna start with a handful of parts. Our handful of parts are right here. We'll take a look at them very, very brief, very, very soon. But basically, that's going to be the gist of this game. We do stuff. We earn science. We unlock nodes. We get more parts. We get to do more stuff and progress like that. So the question becomes, oh, but how do you get science? Well, that's going to be what the rest of this video is all going to be about. We have two places that we can build things in. One is called the space plane hangar. It is used to build planes. Some of these planes can go into space later on. We also have the vehicle assembly building. It is used to build rockets. Planes get launched from the runway. Rockets get launched from the launch pad. For the most part, you can fart around with that if you so like. Basically, there are only two other buildings that you actually have to even think about when you're in science mode. One is the astronaut complex. In the astronaut complex, you can hire more astronauts or more kerbinauts, whatever you like to prefer to call them. Either way, we have four Kerbinauts to start with. Kerbinauts are divided into three classes. We have pilots, we have engineers, and we have scientists. Pilots um, are about uh, flying your crafts. Engineers are about fixing stuff and doing some other stuff that we'll be getting to later on. Scientists are for collecting science. They have advantages for that. And here we have another so uh, pilot. So we start with two pilots an engineer and a scientist. Functionally, our two pilots are identical other than one being female Valentina and the other one being a male. And over here we have, well, new recruits that if you want to, you can pick them up. You can hire more of them if you want. If you want to hire all of these folks, you certainly can. It costs you nothing. One of the differences between science mode and career mode in career mode, these people, well, they, you have to pay them, so they cost money. Anyway, let's get started with building something. We're going to start in the vehicle assembly building and we're going to build something spectacularly simple just to show you how the science works. So this is our vehicle assembly building and we can take a look at our parts and it's starting off here with our root parts. They're always the top here and the only root part we have is the Mark 1 command pod. This is a command pod capable of going into space and it houses only one Kerbal. And what we're going to do is something really simple to it for now. We'll build something that will fly in the next episode. But in this episode, we want to talk about science. So if we scroll down here, we have the science part, the science tab, and we have one science component. It is called a mystery goo. So we're going to take one of these mystery goos and we're going to attach this to our spacecraft. Oh, right about here. And this is it. This is going to be our craft because all we're going to do is put it out in the launch pad out here and we're going to collect ourselves the science. We're going to see how that works. Now up here we have four buttons and this one's for selecting our crew. You can see Jebediah is always jumping in ready to go but since we're not going to be flying this thing we're going to be connecting science. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Bob. Bob is going to be my 
main main person here. We're going to put in our scientists there. Okay, that's going to be about it. If you want to, you can give this thing a name and save it. But I'm not going to worry about that. Instead, I'm going to go over here to the top right where we have this green button, which we use to launch. All right, so here we are on the launch pad with our little capsule. And we got a portrait of Bob down here, down on the side. If you want to, you can actually click the little toggle here, interior. And you can see Bob in there lying on its back in the launch position like he's going somewhere but of course he is not so <laughs> that is fine and what this is about is showing you how to collect the science so we have our one piece of science equipment this mystery goo we're going to open up the mystery goo it says observe mystery goo the thing opens up and we get ourselves a little mystery our little message here it says that we're doing a mystery goo observation from the launch pad and i want to draw attention to this from the launch pad the science is going to be different depending upon your location. So getting yourselves to other location allows you to collect more science. And the more inaccessible those locations are, the more valuable that science is going to be. Being just on the launch pad, we haven't gone anywhere. This is obviously a pretty low bar. But even with the low bar, you can see here that we have collected three units of science. You might also notice that there is a transmit option. Our transmit is not available because we didn't put an antenna on this thing in order to transmit. But either way, it really, in, if you're going to be um, recovering your vessel, which we will in a little bit, uh, transmitting it really isn't that much of an option, Trans or that much of um, an advantage. Transmitting allows you to get that science right now Recovery means that you're going to get that science once you recover the vehicle, which we will do. So we're just going to go over here and we're going to say, let's keep that experiment. And you might be thinking, oh, that's about it. We just got three science. Actually, no, there's more science that you can do. There's science hidden everywhere. If we open up our menu here on the actual command pod, and there's a number of options here, but the one I want to take a look at is this one down here at the bottom that says crew report. We're going to do a crew report. And our crew report says that you have recorded the crew's assessment of the situation. Again, this is from the launch pad. If we can get ourselves to a different location, we can collect even more science. But right now, this is 1.5 science. We're going to keep that, store that away. You may say, no, oh, that's it. We only have two parts, no more science. Oh, no, no, no. Bob can collect more science for us. And by the way, even if Bob was not a scientist, he could collect science. Though as a scientist, he does get a bonus to what he collects. We're going to let go here. We're going to walk away. And by the way, if you're inside the you might be noticing he's in a full spacesuit here. If you don't particularly like that, you can remove his helmet. You can also remove the net ring game you want, so he looks a little bit more appropriate for being not that far away from where he started from. And if we open up our menu here for Bob, you can notice that Bob actually can do two science. One is doing an EVA report. We get a message here that I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? No, it certainly was not. But regardless, we get ourselves 2.4 science from the launch pad. We're going to click on that. And then we can also do a surface sample. We're going to take ourselves a surface sample. And from the surface sample, it says the surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but sure, we'll go for it. We'll pretend there were some launches before we ever got here. There is also trace amounts of a conspicuous green substance. Either way, nine science for that one. We're going to definitely keep that. Now, Bob can only carry at a time one EVA report and one surface sample. So what we're going to do is we're going to store those away. We're going to go back to the capsule. And you can see one of our options here. Well, we have two options. One is to take the data that was in the capsule. That is the... Um, that is the uh, crew report that it did. And the other one is we can store the two experiments we have on Bob. We can store those in the capsule. That's what we're going to do. So all that is um, stored in the capsule. Bob can now do more work. And there's no limit, by the way, in how much you can store in the capsule. All right. So we have been doing this all on the launch pad. Let's get ourselves to a different location, show you how it works. So we're going to walk over here. In fact, we're going to run, aren't we? And by the way, I'm kind of avoiding mentioning controls as best I can because I know a lot of people will be on consoles and those will have different control schemes. So 
you know, make sure you do look at your own control schemes and how to do everything, how to run, and all that kind of thing. So we have now run a little bit of a distance. We are no longer on the launch pad, but we are actually on what's called the crawlway. This is the road that connects the vehicle assembly building to our launch pad that we, our vehicles would presumably move along. But either way, this is a new location. So we're gonna click on Bob here, and we're gonna take another EVA report, and you can see here how it's changed. EVA report from the crawler way. Uh, 2.4 science once again we can collect that and we can do ourselves a surface sample and that's another nine science for collecting a surface sample there and then we're gonna run bomb back you can clearly actually run around and go to all kinds of locations but when you're doing it by foot it does get well a little bit tedious in a future episode, we will build ourselves an actual vehicle and we'll drive around and do this. This isn't entirely necessary. You don't have to get everybody together, but I like to get everybody together. We're going to grab and then we're going to board our capsule. There we go. So now we got it and we got Bob back into his capsule. We have all our science in there, including the science, don't forget, that's in that mystery goo. We're going to go up here to the top and we can see we have the option here to recover our vessel. So that is what we're going to do. And you see here what we have is a summary of all the science that we've collected. What's important is that what this adds up to, which is 27.3 science. So we're going to click next. And we'll say Bob is, re is ready for his next assignment. He has safely returned. And we're going to go now back into our research and development center with our 27 science. And we're going to unlock some new parts. Now right off the bat, you can see these are grayed out, so you cannot unlock these ones until you've unlocked the ones before. So we have to start with these two. So five science for this one. This gives us a nice rocket engines. You know what, I won't go over the parts. We'll take a look at these parts next episode. Uh, we're gonna unlock Engineering 101. One of the big important things here is a thermometer. Uh, that is more science that we can collect as well as an antenna that we can use to transmit said, and said science so we can transmit stuff in the future. When we get to these ones, they're now of different costs. You can see here, this one costs 20, but I only have 17.3 left. So I can't get this general rocketry one. I can get either stability. No, I can't get that one either. It's 18. So basically I'm left down to survivability for 15. And in survivability, we have ourselves, actually what's really useful here is another science piece of equipment, a barometer. That is, again, a more useful thing. thing. If you want to unlock science, what you want to get is more science parts. And sort of a pro tip here, science parts tend to be down towards the bottom of this tech tree. While rocket parts tend to be up the top of the tech tree, middle is... I don't know, miscellaneous in between, I guess. <laughs> so let's go over one last time the main points from this video. Number one, KSP can be played in three modes, sandbox, career, and science. Though science would be the one I would recommend when you are just starting out. Number two, the idea of collecting science is so that you can unlock more parts. Number three, there are three different classes of Kerbals, a pilot, an engineer, and a scientist. Make sure you pick the right Kerbal for the right task. Number four, make sure you don't miss any science. Don't forget that capsules, you can perform crew reports, and with Kerbals, you can do EVA reports and collect surface sample. And finally, number five, science is situational. You get yourself into different situations in different locations. You can collect even more science. And with all that, I think I'm gonna draw this video to a close. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you for the next one.